The ulnar nerve arises from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, then it runs towards the axilla. It is the most medial of the three nerves that lie medial to the axillary artery. The ulnar nerve then descends along the bicipital groove to the anterior compartment. At one point or another, it pierces the medial intramuscular septum and enters the posterior compartment. Approximately 8 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle, in some patients it crosses a fibrous arcade, the arcade of Struthers, where it may be subject to stress. The ulnar nerve runs on the posteromedial aspect of the elbow inside an osteofibrous tunnel, the cubital tunnel, which is a possible source of entrapment. It then appears at the proximal third of the forearm between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. It splits into two motor branches, one for the flexor carpi ulnaris and the other for the flexor digitorum profundus. Then descends between the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus. More distally, it splits into two sensory branches, a sensory dorsal branch that innervates the dorsal side of the ulna edge of the hand, and a more distal sensory palma cogenius branch. We then find it on Guyon's canal in the medial side of the wrist, where it splits into two branches, a motor branch that innervates most of the hand muscles, and a palma sensory branch that innervates the fifth finger and the medial surface of the fourth finger. The ulnar nerve extends from the medial cord of the brachial plexus to the wrist. To facilitate its examination, the patient is seated facing the technician with the arm in abduction. The elbow rests on a hard surface with the forearm externally rotated so the medial side of the arm can be reached adequately. The easiest way to locate the proximal portion of the ulnar nerve is to approach it medially at the level of the middle third of the arm, where it is observed superficially and then, using the elevator technique, tracing it to the axilla, where it is found medial to the other main trunks of the arm. In the upper third of the arm, the ulnar nerve is located anteriorly in the bicipital groove at a point that varies according to the individual. It pierces the medial intermuscular septum, which you see here. Here it's in the posterior position, thus becoming retroseptal. Approximately 8 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle, some patients have a fibrous arcade called the Arcade of Struthers, which has nothing to do with the ligament of Struthers. Using the elevator technique, we can sometimes observe hyperechoic thickening around the ulnar nerve, clearly visible here. This could explain why some ulnar nerve release procedures fail in the elbow. Because the ulnar nerve is on the posteromedial aspect of the elbow, we need to place the arm differently to study it properly. So we place the hand on a hard surface to get an axial posteromedial view of the elbow. In the elbow, the ulnar nerve runs posteromedially in an osteofibrous tunnel covered by a retinaculum, the cubital tunnel. This is a common site of ulnar nerve entrapment in the elbow. Cubital tunnel syndrome is the second most common nerve compression syndrome of the upper limb after carpal tunnel syndrome. The nerve is clearly visible against the medial epicondyle here, and we have to perform a flexion manoeuvre to look for possible nerve instability, which could then sublux over the medial epicondyle. If this subluxation involves the triceps brachii, it is called snapping triceps syndrome. The ulnar nerve then runs to the forearm between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris to come into contact with the flexor digitorum profundus. At this point, it splits into motor branches that can sometimes be studied, such as the small motor branch for the flexor carpi ulnaris here. In the forearm, the ulnar nerve splits into two main sensory branches, including a dorsal cutaneous sensory branch, which can be seen here, emerging and heading posteriorly and subcutaneously. At the wrist, the ulnar nerve heads towards an osteofibrous tunnel, Guyon's canal, 
and runs alongside the ulnar vessels. The terminal division of the ulnar nerve consists of a sensory branch and a motor branch that go down and around the hook of haymate, which is lost quite quickly. At the hook of haymate, the sensory branch splits into two terminal branches, the fourth digital nerve and the medial nerve, which can be followed to the end of the fifth finger. The point where the ulnar nerve pierces the intermuscular septum is a classic but rare site of ulnar nerve entrapment. Here you see a very enlarged ulnar nerve that pierces the medial intermuscular septum with difficulty and remains thickened below it. Tracing it back above, you also see this hypoechoic and thickened appearance. Cubital tunnel syndrome is the second most common nerve compression syndrome in the upper limb. Here we see a cross-section of a very rounded, very thickened ulnar nerve, having lost its cord-like structure which then regains its normal surface. Ulnar nerve entrapment in Guyen's canal should make us look for a tumour or mass. On this axial view, we see a poorly defined hyperechoic structure in contact with the ulnar nerve vessels. On the sagittal view, you can clearly see this oblong hyperechoic structure, which lifts the ulnar nerve and corresponds to a compressive lipoma.